Greetings, my peeps. This is the original Brown Sugar, aka Shezzy. Tune in to the live conversation show with 10 Star General and Sharon Mango. All right. Greetings, massive. Okay. Greetings, okay. massive. Uh, how are you doing, Sharon? I'm good. Thank you. Very good. Again, apologies. Running a little behind, but I'm so happy that we are here with Big Stone. So uh, happy you are here, sir. Thank you. We have been dying to talk to you, as you know. Let me first give from one general to another. I have to give Big Stone my full salute. I salute you, sir. You know you're my general, right? You're my general, too. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Thank you it's so much for having me. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, blessed up to Rankin and coming in the building also. Listen, Big Stone is an absolute blessing. Uh, you do not know that for a very long time I have been looking for you. Wow. I have been looking for you. And my first search for you came when a lady called Yvonne Sterling was going through a situation. I had known of the work she was doing, because at the time you were doing something with Paul Elliott and his album, right? Now, I knew of the humanitarian work you were doing, right? And I said, the only man who can help Yvonne Sterling, because at the time nobody was involved trying to help her out. I saw what she was going through, and I'm like, man, I need to get hold of Big Stone so he can help this woman. The only person I know that can help her is Big Stone. And at the time, like a week later, I saw Lenny, little Lenny, had got involved, and he got you involved. And when I saw that, I was able to breathe easy because I knew that she was in the right hands. And I saw that manifest itself into what I knew would happen for her if you got involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's an absolute pleasure, sir, to have you on our show. I've seen what you've done in the community and I want people across the world to see that. So we're going to start with our introductions with a beautiful queen down there in New Jersey, sunny New Jersey, Miss Miss Sharon Mango. Thank you so much. Is it sunny? It's a little bit dull, but you know, we're going to have a little bit of warm weather. But I am Sharon Mango, representing SBRB Radio. It is a pleasure to be in the room with everybody. Big Stone, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on because you've done so much great works. We've heard about your great works along the years and so on and so forth. And we just want to find out like who you are, what started you in this whole thing when we get started talking, when we get started talking. And welcome again to everybody. We will be, hopefully more people will be joining in. I think they will be because I'm sure they want to know Big Stone's life. Who Big Stone is. What a life. What a life and continued works that you're doing. You're such an inspiration to many, to many people. Continue the conversation. I'll be back in a second. A lot is going on here. I'll be back with you in a few. Okay. So, yes, yeah, so a big stone. We know the things that you're doing, but let's talk about family life. You're growing up. Where did you grow up in Jamaica? Okay. My slave name is Claude Sinclair. Okay. Actually born in St. Anne on the 3rd of July, 1957, which makes me 64 years old and 65 in July. Yes. I moved from St. Anne when I was a few months old. My mom and died, and we moved back to where my father came from, a little district in St. Mary by the name of Enfield. Mm -hmm. Now, my father and mother were extremely... Mm -hmm. I went to school barefooted, mm -hmm. I wear my first underwear until I was 12 years old. Wow. And chink infested Kaya mattress. Mm -hmm. I have to tell people the truth because what I have become is a direct result of those experiences. Right. Sleeping in a, in a room with my brothers and sisters, all of us bungled up on this big, square kaya mattress and for those who don't know what kaya is it's like a thistle 
that they use to make the padding of the bed. But when you urinate, because I never could stop wet in bed. Oh. I was eight, nine years old, uh, bed wetting. Um, and my brothers too, you know, and sisters. So I used to wet bed a lot. So when you wet the bed, and because of the softness of the cloth that they use to make the mattress, the tissue would come out and they would be like needles. Mm. Wet in the bed also encourages bed bugs. Mm -hmm. We in Jamaica chink. See, a lot of people don't want to talk about it, but ain't no shame in my game. Mm -hmm. These bugs used to feed on me. You know, when you get up at two o'clock in the morning, you'll see bugs all over. Mm -hmm. My revenge would be at 12 o'clock when my mom said, Claude, take out the mattress and sun the mattress. And when I take the mattress out, my revenge would be to beat the mattress and <laughs> to kill them at that particular time. Mm -hmm. So growing up in this poor district of, 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 of Enfield, my father said, boy, I don't want my family to be here. So he moved us out of Enfield to Montego Bay. Mm -hmm. I was nine years old at the time. When I got to Montego Bay, still poor, so I'm living in a, a little area known as Salt Spring Road, which is close to Glen Devon. Father couldn't afford the rent there, so we moved down to the market, Fustic Road. And if anybody know where Fustic Road is, it's, you can stay where I live and see the market. So for seven days a week, people would be going by at the corner of where I live, there was a gang by the, the name of Jack Arbin, and there's another gang known as the Ray Ray Lady Lane Gang. So growing up at nine, I was a member of the Boys Brigade. I was a Cub Scout. I was a member of the Boys Club because I, I was always into the military aspect of, you know, of my life. Anyway, moving on real quickly. When I was 17 years old, I became a member of the Jamaica Defense Force. The reason being is to be able to stay on the street late because as a 17 year old, the police are telling you you can't be on the street and where I lived, that was like a very volatile community with two gangs. So I said, the best thing for me, I'm not gonna join a gang because I don't like gangs. The second best thing for me is to join the Jamaica Defense Force so at least I can be a man now and show my ID and be on the streets. Mm -hmm. But the money Sharon Mango was very, very poor. Mm -hmm. It was like $40 every fortnight. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, that is $80 a month. How am I going to, you know? Then the Jamaica Constabulary Force was, was iron. And I said, okay, $367 a month. Let me jump over from the Jamaica Defense Force into the Jamaica Constabulary Force. So I became a police officer where I spent five years. If you look on your screen, you'll see a photograph of me. Mm -hmm. When I was 18 years old, that picture was taken at Port Royal. Can you find the one, um, the one in my, with my short pants? Wobble knees, wobble knees. Wobble knees, there is he with his long <laughs> wobble, wobble. Knees, If you look at my knees, you'll see. Wobble you'll see, knees. You know, yeah, all knees. So I was a policeman at 18, you know, stationed at the police band division, uh, playing trumpet. And in 1980, when I turned 23 years old, I migrated through my brother to the United States of America. Okay. That was everything started now. When I got there, I was confused because everybody was looking at me. I didn't realize I was a black man until I got to the United States of America on the 15th of August, 1980. Mm -hmm. I started to study about myself. Who am I? Why are we being hated so much? Why they don't like us? We're at the bottom of the ladder. We, we, we you know, if you walk into a store, you have people following you around and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So to study Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Double He Be the Boy, Booker T. Washington, and all the great freedom fighters, Nelson Mandela, Steve Bantu Beek, and so on. But then I realized that all these great freedom fighters were all motivated by the right honorable Marcus Garvey. So I said to myself, wow, the honorable Marcus Garvey motivated Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, then Nelson Mandela, Steve Bantubico. This man must be something special. So I started to study now the honorable Marcus Garvey. 
I got so radicalized into the movements of Mr. Darby that after spending almost 25 years in the United States, mm -hmm. you know, I got a dream that I should leave all that and come back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. no, kind of crazy. She said, oh my God, I lost my husband. He's cracked out now. Or he's smoking too much herb. What is he going to do in Jamaica? There's nothing but animals down there. He's going to die because the crime rate in Jamaica, you know, those days, like it was very, very bad. It got worse now. So anyway, I took it upon myself to come home in 1993, started Big Stone Records and production. Okay. When I come back, motivated a lot of young men who are now superstars. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can name off Anne, Nesbeth. You've heard of Nesbeth? Yeah, yeah. You can show the photograph in 1998, Nesbeth won my talent competition in 1998. That's a photograph right there of me and yeah. Nesbeth. Mm -hmm. And it was a young man. He says to me, Big Stone, this is my first Grammy. <laughs> he every single day. When I met Nesbeth, he was from a little area in our garden known as Zimbabwe. Now, Zimbabwe is a volatile era. There are a lot of gangs around and so on and so forth. And things was bad at the time. So I motivated him. You know, I, I, I used to go in these communities and, and, and show them that, hey, not because you're born in a situation like this, your outcome have to be the same. You can change your life. You can become the best of who you are. And I see greatness in you. Mm -hmm. 1998, it was the first place winner in my talent competition. Then I met another young man who's great now. His name is Sheldon Campbell. They call him Turbulence. Oh, yeah, Turbulence. Yeah, I, I met Turbulence him. when Turbulence was only 16 years old. Mm -hmm. 16, he, Turbulence come from a little area known as Akiwak. Mm -hmm. Umbertown. You know where Umbertown is, Terry Lopez? So that's a picture of me and Turbulence. He was... 17 years old, he was just about to perform that night at the Asylum nightclub. So, you know, I motivated Turbulence too. I was the first person to give him the microphone and say, young man, you have greatness in you. You can become the best of who you want to become. Then I met Warrior King, I met DYCR, I met Gospel DJ, Mr. Gadi Gadi, and I motivated all of them. Mm -hmm. Teaching and the principles of the right honorable Marcus Garvey. Started my record label. I'm a record producer. Then I said, I want to do even greater things because ain't nothing that you cannot do. If you think about it, like the honorable Marcus Garvey say, if you have it in your mind, you can hold it in the palm of your hands. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, 2012 coming around, the honorable Marcus Garvey will be celebrating his 125th birthday. I want to see if I can bring the son of Marcus Garvey to Jamaica. I thought about it. I think long and hard, not having much money. And of course, voila, the son of Marcus Garvey came to Jamaica on the days of Big Stone Records. The government at that time didn't really believe in me because there was this tucky, uh, picky picky head Rasta man and you asking for help and you telling me that you have confirmed the second son of Marcus Garvey to come to Jamaica. You know what I mean? They, they, they just didn't believe me. Anyway, they didn't give me any help, any help at all. And I did it with other friends who came in. Uh, Miguel Lawn was one of them. And Heru Aishak Musa Menelik was one of them. And they helped me out. And it was very successful. Matter of fact, they, we, we had wanted Emancipation Park to keep the tribute. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor at that time was telling me, no, no, you can't get Emancipation Park. We'll give you William Grant's Park. I said, no, I don't want William Grant's Park. That wasn't part of my vision. My vision is to keep the tribute in Emancipation Park. Remember, you? it was Marcus Garvey that said, and not Bob Marley, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. None but ourselves can free our yeah, mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Marley, Bob Marley took those words from the right honorable Marcus Garvey and put it in a song. So if you name the park Emancipation Park, 
And on that statue, the new statue you have below, emancipate yourself from mental slavery, and you have Marcus Garvey, that is where the function should be kept. Mm -hmm. Killed, that was where the function was kept. And on that day, the mayor also gave posthumously to the son of Marcus Garvey, the keys to the city, to Mr. Garvey. Remember, it was the municipal that arrested Mr. Garvey back in the, in the 40s. Remember that? Okay, so I've done so much things. Um, where do we go? Any question you all want to ask me, just ask me. I'm, I'm not really into talking about myself that much, but any, anything you want to know about? Up the mighty race, you can accomplish what you will. Those are the words from the great Marcus Messiah. God. Marcus Garvey, you're my teacher Marcus Garvey, yes you are the one Marcus Garvey, you have changed me And direct me of the works that must be done You are the prophet sent from God You are the Moses Children from going astray They say you left us on the 10th of June We know that's simply not true The knowledge you have taught us remains in our hearts And your glorious work must be taught Oh, I've never seen anyone quite like you, Mr. Darby I've never seen anyone quite like you Marcus Garvey, you're my teacher Marcus Garvey, yes you are the one Marcus Garvey, you have changed me And the ready of the works that must be done step though 10 star general you have to take the proper step but remember back in those days of a junior biles i had the opportunity of speaking to the they didn't know they were superstar alton ellis had a song by the name of miriel remember that if i had a pair of wings over the bridge that song was written in 1957 the same year i was born he didn't know that that song was a number one song until he got to england in 1961 he didn't know that that song was a number one song because what the producers did at that time, they would put themselves as the writer of the song. Right. All and all the artists get is just a performance right. That's it. 
you know, and it happens to a lot of them. It happens to Junior. It happens to Alton Ellis. 90% of the old time artists, Ernest Wilson, look at Ernest Wilson. You know, he died recently, poor, you know? I went look at that. Wilson, How does Ernest that happen? Wilson. Because the artists at that time just wanted to hear their name on the radio and their songs on the radio. And they just wanted to perform. They wasn't looking at it from a business perspective. They were just seeing it as, you know, me just singing and for the love of it, and I'm hearing myself on the radio. It was Bob Marley, you know, and the Marley family who really dig deep into it, you no, know, and got the just cause because everything that Bob did is accounted for. That's why after Bob's death, he, he's still racking up over 20 million US dollars every year in royalties, you know? So, so it has to do with the fake producers or the unscrupulous producers who at the time when they're doing the paperwork for publishing, they put themselves down as writers. And remember there was no internet for the artist to query, whatever the, um, the producer says. People like Lee Scratch Perry holds a lot to Junior Biles and a lot to other artists. Lee Scratch Perry have so much royalties for other, I'm not speaking bad of the dead. It's the truth, you know? And guess what, where's the money? The money is gone to his spouse. And, and, and most of the people who are responsible will never see a dollar from their heart when it comes to Lee Scratch Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it saddens me to, to learn of all the, you know, variations that go on within the music industry. And seeing somebody, you know, it was painful because no matter where you go in the world, especially Fade Away is one of the biggest songs in the 80s. What? He you was, can't go anywhere without hearing that song. Mm. You know, the earthful thing about it, you still have record producer. They used to come to Junior's house and pick up Junior in his sixth state, take him to the studio, record him whichever way they can, because... Mm -hmm. He knows these songs, you know, these are his songs. And they would record him, give him a couple of hundred dollars, and, and then they would even take him back home. Junior lost his sight. You know how Junior lost his sight? Because he was wandering the streets, and some kids robbed him of his sneakers. Sister told me this. You can go online and see the story on Big Stone Television, right? And they actually robbed Junior, beat him up, and knock out his eye. That's how Junior mm -hmm. lost his eye. Because remember now, back in those days, there was no social media. So people didn't know what Alton Ellis looked like. People didn't know what Junior Bias looked like. Mm -hmm. so this man with gray beard walking the streets. You know, and that's why I did what I did with my channel. I tried to go out there now and find um, um, the greats, you know, the greats, and then bring them out so people can know that this is the man that did this. This is the man that did that. This is the man that did that. This is the man that did that. You know, I dedicate my life to helping those who are helpless. We salute you. We salute you. Thank you. Sorry, I forgot I was muted. <laughs> Were you talking? <laughs> Like, <laughs> very exciting. Yeah, very we, we exciting, yeah. And and when I speak this way, and I and I want the world to know this, whenever I speak about <laughs> get into crime and violence, which is affecting us tremendously in Jamaica at this time, I want the world to know that I would never live anywhere else on the planet Earth but Jamaica. So I'm not speaking down about my country. What I'm doing yeah. is to elevate the rest of us to make you know that this is what is happening on the rock. Since yeah. the beginning of the year until now, we have killed over 250 people. Today is the 5th of March. And we have killed successfully over 250 people. For what? What are we fighting for? We kill more people than what have died in the Ukrainian war recently. For what? You know? So when we get to that point, I, I just want the world to know that I'm not bashing my country. I love my country. 
but we want Jamaicans on the outside to know the truth and to put their two cents in, get them a hold of your family members and, and, and touch base with yard, keep in touch with yard so that we can have the culture, the great culture that we have. We have the greatest culture the world has ever seen and we're losing it little by little. Let, let, let me ask you about, you know, how you became a motivational speaker before I hand over to Sharon Mango. Um, show, let, to help us to understand where your passion came from, you know, for helping people and how you became a motivational speaker and an activist. What was the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, that, that made you this way? Poverty. See, I grew up extremely poor. I went to school barefooted. And I said, if I can use my life and explain to these youngsters, because what they're experiencing now in the year 2022 is not even close to what I experienced. If you ask a young man what his chink, he can't tell you unless he got arrested and have gone to jail. Mm -hmm. I use my life story to say that, hey, whatever happened to me, I can brush it off, tell my story so that it will never happen to another young man in Jamaica again. And that was what drive me, that passion to, 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 to help others, to share. You know, I seen my sister Janet Sinclair did it. You know, she practically did it with nothing because we are from that kind of family to share. And then, into the United States and learning about myself and listen to great speakers like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King and Steve Bantubico and of course the great Marcus Garvey. I said, I want to do something like that because I know the spoken words, if you use it in a profound, sincere, honest manner, you can make changes in this world. And that is what I have been doing. Over to you, Sharon, of mm. others. Mm. So I'm not sure. Clear. I'm not sure. Yes. I'm, I'm, matter of fact, if I missed it, I'm sorry. But tell me about your sister, yeah, Janet Sinclair. Huh? I didn't miss it. Oh. All right. Well, Janet Sinclair, her pet name is Lorna. She yes. was born in Enfield, St. Mary. Mm. Janet is my, is like two siblings away from me. I have my brother, that's Glenn, who's two years older than me. And Janet is two years older than Glenn. Okay. Um, like I said, we grew up poor, but there was something about the Sinclair family in terms of academics. My brother, Norman Sinclair, was a medical doctor, a K graduate, you know? Migrated to the United States. He was the one who actually brought me into the United States. Mm. But Janet, now she she have done so much. She was a special constable. You know that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, man, she was a special constable, mm. blue seam as they call it. And um, the reason why she didn't become a, a red seam at the time, height was a factor. Oh. You have to be a certain height. No, they don't care if you're five feet five or that. But height was a factor, so she settled for the less. Um, yeah. was part of the, the police force and sh she became a special constable. Then what happened was in the earlier part, way before Dear Pastor, there was an opening at the Gleaner and she started this advice to the love lord. Right. Janet was doing that. She was about 18, 19 years old. A lot of people didn't even believe that that, that was her because Janet Sinclair in the star. She has to be of white complexion. Uh, I had one person looking at me and said, you're telling me that your sister is Janet Sinclair? You're lying. I know Janet Sinclair personally. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Sinclair is a brown-skinned woman. You know what I mean? And I just laugh and so on, you know, but she was very, very brilliant. She started a number of things. She started Misting Jamaica. She did Miss, uh, Mini Miss Jamaica. Uh, she did Miss Jamaica Grandmother. She, Janet is a pioneer. She just liked to open new grounds. That's why um, they did a song. If you have a problem with your lover's affair, tell it to Janet. Janet Sinclair. Sinclair. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah. I remember. Right. 
Little John. Little John. Little John. Right, yeah. Little John. It was Little John. Yeah. You remind me about it all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember her. You know, it was a great individual. She passed away about uh, maybe about four years, four or five years ago. She died from a heart attack. She she practically died working. I, she yeah, I didn't coming, see that. Yeah, she was actually coming from um, Old Arbor. And when she reached at the back road to Spanish Town where the salt factory is, she had an heart attack. Mm. She died right there at the Spanish Town Hospital. I had to go verify her identity. It was a very sad day for me. But the funeral is up on YouTube if you want to see it. You can go to Big Stone Television and you can just type in funeral serve for Janet Sinclair. You'll see me, you'll see the entire family, her children. Mm -hmm. She has a that's the law, you know, Courtney Foster. She's okay. a big boy, you know, within the calm and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter Gay Foster again is another uh, great, great niece of mine that, that 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 is doing well. We all turned out to do well, irregardless of the circumstances. Of the of right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is why my life is like that. I just want to show people that, hey, if I can do it, so can you. And these were the obstacles that I faced. You're not facing half of these obstacles, so you should be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Tell me about, um, I know Yvonne Sterling, I'm trying to remember some of her songs, like how did you find out about her circumstance? Well, Yvonne Sterling, um, I grew up listening to some of her songs. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Remember the big hit that she had? If you love me, let me know. Mm -hmm. No, let me go. That was a monster hit. Mm -hmm. Why, I, 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 after meeting Ivan Sterling, why she didn't make it was because of how she looked. See, she was on the chubby side. She was very dark skinned. She didn't have a European nose mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. the greatness of Amasia Griffiths and Judy Mawad and that so on and so on always get noticed before her, but she had this big, great voice. So she felt into depression. After recording over a hundred songs, she did a big monster hit with Dennis Brown. Mm. Reward for me. Just Google it. Dennis Brown, Yvonne Sterling, reward. She had done it all, but she did not get the recognition that she was supposed to get. So what really troubles me was Little Lenny came home one evening and he said, Big Stone, I'm reading the newspaper and I'm reading about a lady by the name of Yvonne Sterling that she's in bad shape. She's down there in the New Asian area and I want to take some money to her. I said, Little Lenny, that's a great idea. But you know what I want? I don't want you to do it secretively. I want you to do it public so that your gesture would create what you call a domino effect. Right. And Sterling. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the video, you'll see myself and little Lenny driving his red Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. down to the police station because we wanted to give her some money. Little Lenny gave her 50000 And my friend Sean Prendergast from the Rudolf Prendergast Foundation gave her 20000 So little Lenny gave her 55000 Sean Prendergast from the Rudolf Prendergast Foundation gave her twenty. So she got a total of $75,000 that day. Mm. Then we threw through the flood waters back to New Haven. This is what happened afterwards. Richie Stevens, oh. Richie Stevens, mm. Little Lenny, because him and Little Lenny were good friends. So he saw the video and he called up Little Lenny. He said, Tell me something. I have a friend by the name of DJ Waline in Brazil that is asking me about Ivan Sterling. Is that the same Ivan Sterling? After the checks were made, it was the same Yvonne Sterling. Wow. So what Wallenay did, immediately after I saw it, the newspaper, it was in the Gleaner and all that, after big up Andre Williams, the reporter, that busted the story because if he didn't do the story, because originally he didn't go there to do a Yvonne Sterling story. He went there because there was a flood and there were crocodiles coming up on the bank of the river and so on. And he went there to cover the flood and crocodile. Mm -hmm. but there, Yvonne Sterling saw him and said, um, she was well-spoken, 
um, excuse me, sir. My name is Yvonne Sterling, you know, and um, here's me on the posters. I used to be a big singer, you know, and so on. Is there any way you can help me? So my, I have goose people running on my sweat when, when I remember that. You know, I cried in the police station when we gave her that money. You know why I cried? And I'm still tearing it in this day. She didn't get what she was deserved. You know, she didn't get a due just, and that's why we open that artists like Kerry Lopez and Rankin and get what they deserve. Make sure you have your thing, your, your thing properly set down, your copyright, your publishing, and everything. Get your just deserve because Ivan was one of the greatest boys you can ever earn. And she died poor. She was just about to make it after the Richard Stevens, uh, after Richard Stevens pick her up. Took her to the studio. They did. They redid a Bob Marley song. Um, Thank you, Lord, for what you have done for me. They did. The, they did. The, they did the video. The song took off. People know she's making money now. People from all over the world. Even Sterling, they want dog plates and so on. So she started now to pick up. They moved her from New Haven out of that rat, rat infested um, apartment that she was in, and moved her to Portmore. While she was over by Portmore now, and she started to get the recognition that she deserved. I think she became a victim of her own success because, you know, she started making a few dollars now when, you know, maybe she got overly excited and she suffered from high blood pressure, you know what I mean, and so on. And she had a massive stroke and died three months later. She didn't get a chance to see the reality of her work, you know. But she was a great, great, great singer, and I'll always remember Yvonne Sterling. She didn't get what she was deserved. As a matter of fact, um, she made it to Winford William on stage. Mm -hmm. And Winford William on stage, you should see, she cried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She said, there's a lot of producers out there that when she called upon them, they would give her $500. Her song is number one all over the world. They're making crazy money from her, $2,000, $1,500. And she was scared. She said, Big Stone, you know, and she said, um, Winford, I can't even call these people name because they might just kill me, you know, because they did so much out there for her. She had done mm -hmm. over 100 songs. Mm -hmm. She did over 100 songs. These are big songs. Right? Yeah. Until she died poor. So she's she's a special case to me. Yeah, yeah. that's why I asked you about that because I always remember she. Yes, I I know the history of her, and that's the sad part is that just when she was making it, she she never in got to enjoy the fruits of her labor. Right, she died knowing wow I couldn't even speak up because I was so afraid. Right, but here you are telling her story. And there are so much more like that. You know what I mean? The journey continues. Did she not have any children? One daughter, but her daughter passed away for um, a year or so before. She wow. had the slumber that she was in. One daughter she had. But she has sisters and she has brothers. Uh, if you look at the, um, if you look at the, um, I want to apologize for my, my, I'm very emotional when it comes to certain That's okay. That's okay. okay. But um, if you look at, um, she have a nice family. She have her sisters, a brother out there that love her to death, that always give her support too. But you know, she's a grown woman they're, and they're not rich. You know what I mean? She's just so much that they can do, you know, to help her. But they did everything to, to help her, you know? So I want to big up the Sterling family, big up all of you all for doing such a remarkable job, for loving your sister. Also, Juna Biles family. Um, remember, I invited his daughter, uh, Christine Biles, to come to Jamaica, to come down here to take care of her father and to be um, what you call it now, the caretaker. Yeah, the caretaker. She she, she had the legal authority, uh, a power of attorney for her father, busily um, trying to pursue some of these money that is owed to her father, who's still alive. Mm -hmm. Juna just turned 74. We had his birthday recently, if you've seen it. It was a beautiful day that we spent over by House of Dread, and we take him back to the days because Junior used to go to these places, you know? 
I hang out and it was, it was a beautiful, so we have to big up House of Dread again for giving us that opportunity. Miguel Lawn, fame attorney, was there. Heru Aisha Kamusa Menelik, Denise Isis Miller from Roots of M. Want to big them up. We also want to big up Tabu Mahat Eru from IRFM. We also want to big up, big up, big up Muta Baruka because Muta Baruka was also instrumental in helping Junior okay. in, in making sure that, you know, what he could do to, you know, provide money and so on for Junior. So Muta, anyway, the Muta, big up yourself. Kabu, big up yourself for the words that you do. I didn't do it. I'm not going to sit here and take all the credit. I was never, I did my little part, I did my civic duty. And that is why I want every single person just to do a bare little part. You don't have to do this great thing, you know, just do your little part. And you're doing your little part and that person doing a little part and that person doing a little part. We all come together and make it and make it happen. Mm. You know, so I don't want to take no credit for what I do. I do it because I enjoy doing it. And I do it because I see that it should be done and must be, you know? You, you, you know, I, I have to say that you are like a living angel that has gained these wings. And if you look deep enough, you see it, you know what I mean? Because like I say, I've known about you for a long time. Always wanted to meet you. You inspired me greatly, you know, um, which is why when I heard about Yvonne Sterling, you were the only person I could think of. And like literally like a week later, I see little Lenny, even before I, again, because I sent messages out to various people to yes. link you up. But like a week later, literally, I see you and little Lenny helping the same woman, you know? And I see, you know, that before she had a stroke or a heart attack, you know, that she received the glory that she was supposed to receive. And that's one of the greatest things you can ever attain in life is that before you die, that you actually see the people who helped you and you actually exactly. see the glory behind, because the song was so emotional. Actually, went out and bought that song. Thank you, Jeff, for what you've yes. done for me. Mm -hmm. And I actually saw her singing it and enjoying that emotion, enjoying being where she was, because I saw the squalor. I actually saw where the flood had devastated her home. Yes. She had basically lost, lost everything, everything, everything. everything. Lost everything. Yes. And to know that you came to her aid, not just you, but little Lenny and various others. But I've known for a very long time that you have been dedicated and active towards helping others. Even when, and, and, and I still want to go back there and, and forgive me for saying what I say, even when your family did not believe in you till this day, you have become a blessing to so many Jamaican people in Jamaica. Because if it wasn't for you, only God knows where Yvonne Sterling would have been today Thank if you. you didn't get involved. You Thank see where I'm coming from? So we understand the emotion. And even when she went through what she went through, even as a big man, even it made me cry. Course, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know a human being who wouldn't shed a tear. Because she, she suffered. Mm. As a, and, 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 and a lot of female artists in Jamaica suffered. And I suffering to this day because of the type of uh, producers that we have that don't really. <laughs> you know, they, 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 they mm. don't sleep with every art, female artist. You have to, you know, sleep with them. Come on. My talent. So, what about my talent? You know, my talent yeah. comes first. Mm -hmm. Producers don't see that. Mm. You know? I mean, I've, I've known artists who were told that if you do not lose weight, you will never make it in the industry. They were told not only to do liposuction, but also to uh, uh, lighten their skin color. Yes. Yes. I know I know the stories. I've been told the stories <laughs> firsthand, you know, and I know that the industry is not a very nice place. The music industry is not a nice place you know so 
I, I want us to progress from this this conversation now and and lead it into because I know you've done so much even with Gully Bop and and so many other people in the industry that the, the story speaks for itself. If you go online, you'll you'll hear the stories and see what Big Stone has done and invested, you know, in the industry. And uh, we come now full circle to you know the the crime that is going on in Jamaica, which is out of control and in my conversations with you over the last couple of days even myself and Sharon and you know we spoke and one of the things we you said to me which made absolute sense you mentioned a statistic I think you must have said something like 60 percent of Jamaica must be going through mental health most definitely. That happened about over two years ago when the health minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, and um, he was saying that we have a problem. And the problem that we have is that a lot of our Jamaicans are insane or display um, mental issues. And since the beginning of this year, police have shot and killed four mentally ill. One, one that was shot and killed, that really touches me, and I forgot his name, but his mother pleaded to the police before he actually killed the policeman, because this policeman was walking about his business, and he picked up a rock and just hit the policeman in the head, unprovoked. But, but, but the mother was saying that he always go to the police and say, listen, my son is acting um, erratic. Please help my son. Some of them are saying this is not our responsibility. And I agree, it is not the police department responsibility to take these people to get psychiatric care. We have, there, there should be other uh, 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 sections of the government that do just that. I remember one time, uh, quite a few years ago, where they went to Montego Bay, get a truck and just loaded up these people that sleep. With, and most of them were not insane, they're just homeless people take them from uh, their environment in Montego Bay and carry them to the country and just dump them off. How are these people going to eat when they don't know where the next garbage can is at, at Casey's? How are they going to eat when the garbage can down the road, uh, uh, Union Street, they used to remember that from the Chinese restaurant. So if they have any leftovers, they can go eat. You're going to take them up from a place that they have an idea where to find scrapses and leftovers and carry them, go dump them in another part that they don't know, know where they are. Mm. You know, another insane person. Um, the act is hideous because this man was sleeping and he just took a machete and just decapitated this man. Two weeks ago, um, a young man, very learned, he was a lecturer, so he was doing good. And he mm -hmm. just flipped and stabbed his mother and father to death. But there were signs, people were saying that we saw signs. We see that he was acting a little strange. Then do something about it. If I'm in your environment and you see me moving, you know, I'm not taking a shower anymore like I used to. My clothes are dirty. My hair is not washed. You know, oh, you, 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 you get me? These are some of the telltale signs that something ain't right, right. Because a person's supposed to take a shower ever so often. Yeah. You know, look at it. There are two incidents that I'm telling you that people are insane. Two incidents that happened in the last two weeks. A man, one was shot and killed over a parking spot. And the other one was stabbed and killed over a parking spot. Oh, where is it? A parking spot that doesn't belong to either of them, yet still one man is now charged for murder and the other one is dead. And then a week after that, the same identical, man, I was here in the spot before you. And, and people don't have that reasoning ability anymore, tends to general. They resort to violence very quickly. You know, we're, we're, we're like a Molotov cocktail. As soon as, uh, you, even if you step on somebody and say, I am sorry, they want to kill you, kill your mother, kill your father, kill your family, kill everybody in the family. When Actually, 
I actually saw where Chakademos was explaining the very same scenario exactly. that he went through. A man was just blocking him. All he did was toot the arm and said, big man, could you move up a little bit so I can drive? B, we are talking about, yo, remember going to shoot you. How did that, how did we get there? You know, how did we get there? So these are some of the things that's affecting Jamaica. And if we don't look at it seriously, and if we as outside don't get involved and look at what is happening to this island, we're going to explode. Now, now one of the things that, this is where our conversation begins now, because I, I've been left wondering, how do we speak to the very same people who do not want to be spoken to about anything. That, that's my PG version of what I'm trying to say. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Because nobody oh, wants to be spoken to. The power, Penstar General, just like what you're doing. Look how far you are and you're addressing the situation, right? Look how much people you have on the panel. Terry Lopez, you have Sharon Mango, you have, you know, you have Rakinan, and there are others, Jerry Harris and so on. But there's other people out there listening to the that we have if we do mm. not unify our efforts and says that hey one day it's gonna fall on your doorstep because a lot of people start to say well man is that my concern oh i'm in a business about that you know my family all right but when it, it's their doorstep then it's a different story you know people are killing each other down here all right look at a case like this a mother was driving a hurley model uh audi 2021 Brand spanking you. She claimed that she hit a pothole, come to a little slow stop, and a man snatched her from the vehicle, took her 2021 Audi, and in nine minutes, when the police recovered the vehicle, her little artistic son was found with his throat slashed from ear to ear. And they expect us to believe that story. Recently, a sergeant of police, right? Had his son in the back seat of his car, was supposed to drop him off at school. The pressure of the job got him so much that he forgot to even take the kid to school, went straight to work. And five hours later, said, Oh my God, my son is in the vehicle. When he went there, his son is dead. Mm -hmm. A school teacher picked up four children, and on her way to, 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 to the school, she dropped off three of them. She forgot that there was another child in the vehicle. Four hours later, that child is dead. How do we account, um, account for these acts? Let me let me ask you a question. So, all these things happening, what do you think is causing it? I'm going to say, before you even answer that question, I feel like even with the young people, I feel like music is a great big part of some of these things because you have a lot of artists out there not saying the right thing. I agree with you. If music is this universal thing, right? Through music, I feel that if people are saying and explaining the right things, write proper lyrics, you like a, a person even like a Kerry Lopez, listen to what she's doing. If you had many more like somebody like that, you know what I'm saying? Every it, it's the ignorance now. The moment you brush a man, a boy, you step on my shoes, you know, and you're yeah. ready to kill and slap. Why? Why is that? What are you it's, proving? All you know right, what I'm saying two problems, Sharon. We have lost a generation of bridging the gap between the elderly and the youngsters. Now, if you look at it this way, my mother and father and my next door neighbors instill certain principles in me. Right. Misbehave and tell strangers, see me, they can just spank me and, and they're not going and tell my mom. Right. Now, if you look at somebody else's child and say, stop that, you can't talk to my child like that, then the father will come up with a gun and shoot you. It happened many times. A lot of teachers have been shot, stabbed, stoned. The music, the lyrical contents of the music is what some of these youngsters have experienced. So, because there's no father figure in the house to really guide them through their experiences, they put it pen to paper, 
and some of them are scamming too, so they have the money to support it. And these songs are played all over the country, and people actually living these songs. Man forget Kappa Shot, Man Mara Must Fly, six people for dead if me go in our yard, kill the mother, the father, the picnic, kill the cat, dog. Kill mm, idolizing evil. Yeah, we, we have this killy killy uh, culture that has been permeated. Carrie Lopez can get a good chance to perform anyway. Ask her, she'll tell you. They won't get a chance because she's not saying and DJing the things that they want, that, that what they want to hear. They want to hear this hardcore thing. Oh, yeah. sure. Look at how the females are behaving. Look at how, uh, 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 and I'm not their fans, but, but and I'm not eating on oh, someone make their money too. But look at some of the things that they're saying. If you want these preferences, that's in your bedroom. You don't bring it out in the streets and tell where you want your man do. And if your man not doing that to you, this, that, and all that. Kerry Lopez not singing those type of songs. So she's not going to get the, the break that she really and truly deserves. Yes. Yeah. Three times as hard, that, 10 times as hard. Mm -hmm. And Kerry is an excellent artist. Yeah. Yeah. Artist, yeah. I can tell you that. I've seen her perform on many occasions. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Presentation, so, everything, you know? So, you know, that being said, it's so much going on that it's the mental health aspect of it that bothers me. That, some, you know, it's the snapping. Was it something that was always there? Is it because of what is happening? You know what I mean? Every, everybody, all right, let's just say, COVID came in and everybody now was inside, kept inside, right? The frustrations of that. It's so social media, media period, everything comes crashing down. And then it's like all these, it's, it's like, for some people it, it helped. Some people learn to sit down. These people now, and some of them now, they just go out and just get nuts, crazy. They want to lose their mind. You know what I mean? So, well, the pandemic or the pandemic has made a lot of people rich. You know, Jeff Bezos will say that he made more money since the pandemic than before. Right. Uh, Christopher Tufton spoke of insanity. It was before the pandemic he made those statements. So, the pandemic helps, but it's not the root cause. The root cause that is causing this in Jamaica. There's this big gap. There's the divide between the elders and the youngsters. You know, mm -hmm. the older mm -hmm. folks are saying, you know, don't want to talk to them boy, you know. Them boy, they are criminal. Them can't change. Oh, yeah. Just saying, oh, you do your time already, man. Our time now. A young people time now. We know I hear nothing what you have to say. Me? You can't talk to me and tell me that. I am going to try to help you. With yeah. two I'm going to tell you, love, man. You, Harry, what you're doing I love you, man. I love you to death, but what you're doing is wrong and you have to do better. Kill me if you want to after that. But I'm going to tell you. And that is what our elders should be doing. Grabbing the bull on and doing your civic duty. Because it takes a village to raise a child. No matter how you look at it, if it doesn't have community involved in raising children, then, 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 then um, what was it? And this gun culture. We love God so much. Ooh. The first thing somebody wants to buy as soon as you get a hold of some money is a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it. The first guy in the parking spot that I did, the, 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 the quarrel with the guy in the parking spot, he told him, he said, yo, man, go for me gun and come and come shoot you in your head. The guy didn't believe him. He went home, got his gun, came back in a BMW and shot him in his head, killing him on the spot. But how is it so easy to obtain these guns even in Jamaica? Like, who, where is this coming from? Do you, do you have like wow. an idea? Well, well, it is said, word on the street, because I'm not into anybody's head or so, but there's a lot of guns coming in because of the guns for drugs trade in Haiti. You know, there's a lot of guns stockpiling in Haiti from the, all the wars that they fought and so on. There's a lot of guns over there. Jamaica is very close to Haiti. In one hour, you can leave the shores of Jamaica and you're in Haiti, or maybe less than an hour. It's very close. And um, when you take food stuff and uh, marijuana into Haiti, they don't have money to pay you. So what they do is they give you guns. When they bring these guns back to Jamaica, you know how much is an AK-47 rifle in Jamaica? 
A AK-47 rifle value about 800,000 Jamaican dollars. Wow. A M16 is the same thing. A nine millimeter handgun is the same thing. Just two days ago, there was a bus at the wharf. 21 guns were discovered. Right now, they're looking for a woman by the name of um, um, JDM Edwards. They're saying that she should turn herself in. Three rifles, 21 handguns, and over 2,000 rounds of ammunition was found. They're finding guns in the National Stadium. You know where our National Stadium is? They unearthed over 12 rifles in the stadium, buried underneath the ground in the stadium. There's guns everywhere. You know? So, so, so we have to do something about that, really. Um, the custom, um, I think what they're doing now, the government, is a step in the right direction. What they're saying is that Instead of we give you three to five years for legal possession of a firearm, we're going to give you starting at 15 years mandatory. So even if you plead guilty, you still have to do 15 years before you're eligible for parole. So let's see if that is passed. It's tabling in parliament, but I don't think it's passed into law as yet. You know, uh, you bringing in uh, illegal guns into the country, you should get at least 30 years in prison. For doing stuff like that so let's see if these laws will work but for right now it's crazy over 245 people murdered since the beginning of this year so for instance let, let me throw something at you um so if a person let's just say me for instance i know of certain information that could help the police to do their job diligently right do whistleblowers if i was a whistleblower would i feel safe delivering that news to the police and would i receive the help that i need from the police i'm making myself they clear have this, yeah they have this mentality that in farm of a dead mm -hmm. in a jamaica yeah. in america they say snitch get stitch you know what i mean <laughs> but there's a new thing that they have been now that says gun get the guns get illegal guns. So if you know where, say, an AK-47 rifle is located, and you yeah. can call the police through this special number, they'll give you $500,000. If you know where a handgun is, right, and you can locate the police, they'll give you $250,000 for it. Mm -hmm. There's some form of compensation. Uh, there's a lot of corruption everywhere. A lot of corruption in the police department. You have people who tell information to the police, and the police will go back to these gang leaders and said, it was 10 star general that told me. So a lot of people are very reluctant and they don't want to share information. But if they, if they work on these issues, the corruption and um, the privacy and so on and so forth, we can bring this country back. Jamaica is not gone totally yet. It's, it's going down, you know, and we don't, with we, like a plane going down. But if everybody, you 10 star general, the Kerry Lopez, um, Sharon Mango and everybody put their two cents in, we can make a difference. I hope this. Wait, how can we make that difference? How can we do that? How We're doing can it right we... now. We're doing it right now. Information, information, that's it. Concern, people see how, 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 how concerned I am, how concerned you are, how concerned Kerry Lopez is, how concerned Rankin, Rankin Ann is in, in wanting change for your country. You know, to work. I, I, you know, think all the time what we really can do because when I think about my mother, for instance, my mother is, you know, thank God she's still alive. My father passed and we took, buried him in St. Anne where my family is from. But my mother's so fearful to come back. I would like to know that she's in Jamaica now and, and, and because of everything that's going on. She don't want to come back. Her sister don't All want right. to go back. Let me tell you what is happening in Jamaica when it comes to returning residents. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have severed ties. When I say severed ties, not cut, to cut it completely, but for years they don't come back. So they save up this money and then all of a sudden they move into a community, is living in a three-story mansion, these youngsters don't know a Sharon Mango. 
I don't know that a Sharon Mango roots is firmly rooted in St. Anne. They don't know. So there's that level of, uh, uh, there's no respect earned there. And they believe that because you come into the community, you owe them something. Look at this couple that spent over 50 years living in Canada. This happened in St. Anne, mm -hmm. in Thomas. She had a helper taking care of the house that they built, nice, beautiful house. And the helper had a son. The helper has been working with this uh, Canadian couple for over 20 years. They took the helper when the son was only 10. They actually raised the son. Now they move home. The son started to steal from them, max out their credit card. And when they was about to go to the police to report it, the son and his friend cut both of their throats and killed them. So I'm saying, as a returning resident, don't sever ties. Keep coming back. Let people know that, hey, this is Sharon Mambo. Like I go to Enfield ever so often. I'm just coming back from Enfield this morning. Mm -hmm. I went to Enfield uh, Thursday and I spent two days there. The, every youngster in Enfield St. Mary knows who I am. Big stone. Hey, 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 because I'm there. I go to funerals. I go to sessions and so on. So when I decide to retire, They'll know that his big stone live over there in that piece of lot right there. Because they grow up seeing me. Not that I mean, people people can uh, uh, are entitled to do whatever you want. You don't have to come back if you don't want to come back in Jamaica. Who are you to tell me that, you know, because I have a two-family house, I'm obligated to you. It shouldn't be like that. But like I say, remember where you come from and keep guys. Even a phone call can help. Mm -hmm. Well, we, I mean, for my part, just speaking on, on, on my family, you know, ties is there. We're always talking. We have a group chat where everybody, we do a check-in. Everybody check-in because, you know, so many people are dropping out. Family members, you don't know anything. You don't even know they were sick. We made sure that from, we had the fam family reunion two years ago. And these are with the younger ones, not even with the elders, because my family's so big. Don't nobody know who they are. Right, yeah. and we had to make that connection to be like, you better know who you is before you got marry somebody, exactly. your family, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we do that check in. We make sure um, we go there. My daughter, I have one daughter. My daughter was born here, but I promise you, she feels her roots in Jamaica. She's there every two seconds. She got in my father's grave. Make sure she go pay homage. You know what I'm saying? She makes sure they know who we are. Just my mother in her exactly. state now. My mother is, every time we go, every chance we get to go, of course we go with her. Now she's older, but I would, I would prefer that she was living there. But just because of the crime rate and returnees coming back to like, why how far and she just come back from in on, you know, Ray, 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 all of that. You know what I mean? She's scared. And I'm try we're trying to get her out of that mentality because I eventually, like my husband and I, my husband is not Jamaican. He's okay. born here, been to Jamaica and would live there tomorrow morning just for the love of the, I love a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're home. You know what I mean? But again, speaking of the crime, there's so many things going on. I have not given up. I know there has to be a God. way. I will never Thank give up God. because I love Thank my God. country. I love my country. Thank God. You know what I'm saying? I will never give up, give up. Love Jamaica. My daughter is now the same way. She's in a position where she would like to do her part, right? My, my daughter's a celebrity chef. She would like to do her part and be like, you know something? If I start something, I could probably create jobs and help our people out there. You know what I'm saying? And that is the mindset her own mindset, nothing that I told her to do. But for the love of where we come from, she said, no, I got to give back. That's because you took her back at an early age. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I was saying. That's the key. You know, that's the key thing. Some yeah. people can see you and remember you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sharon Mango's family and so on. Because they're like that. Oh, the But guess what? There's another thing 
And um, I, would, I would wish for you to open up the line and, and any one of you other guests can ask me any question that we yeah. um, be the one sucking up all the time. Um, yeah. Lopez here is a recording artist, ranking high and so on. They can ask me any question, any question you want to ask me. And, and we're gonna we're back. gonna do that. We're definitely yeah, gonna open up the line. So uh, we, we we definitely will open up the line to to anyone who wants to pose any questions. Um, again, I just want to I, I just want to just reiterate because in in having these conversations, one of my main things is solutions. Again, what is the solutions to everything that we've been talking about? I know that you say, you know, it's good to have these conversations, right? But sometimes that goes over people's heads. But what more can we do that is more interactive to get people involved, to sway away from some of the things that are not really working, you know, that is bringing divisiveness? Okay. Because again, I think... Okay. I think we, we, we have to come to another important question or, or topic, which is parenting. We did talk about um, music and we have to talk about film as well, because film is also negative. Um, I, I do believe having a TV in your home is a way of brainwashing us into this normalcy. You see a lot of things that are wrong, but it becomes a normal way of viewing and seeing situations because you're seeing it every day, which is why over the last 15 odd years, I've chosen not to have a TV in my home because I saw what TV is doing. So TV also yeah. for me plays a part. This now, this is now worse than the television. This. Even worse. Yes, because everything happened. It gets shared on WhatsApp or Snapchat. Uh, on TikTok, everybody is into the sheer thing. If somebody meets in an accident, most people don't even try to help anymore. They just yeah. pick up their phone and to videotape you, hoping that catch your last breath. And they are the yeah. one who videotape it and put it on their their, 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 their their platform and people can view it and make comments. That we have become so insensitive towards death that uh, if somebody gets shot, You'll see a mother walking with a five-year-old down to the scene, you know, with her son or her daughter looking at the dead body. It's like everywhere, you know? People send me things that I don't even know. Every time there's a murder, I get it on my phone. Let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. Are parents scared of speaking to their children? Yes, yes. Because the gap, the gap between... The adults and the elders is very wide. There's no communication there. Children are having children. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, about two years ago, mm -hmm. a lady, she was 17 years old. She had a little baby, 10-month-old baby. But she wanted to go to dance. You know what she did? She didn't have anybody to take care of the baby. So she got up uh, 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 the nipple bottle, put food in it, take the baby and get a blanket and left the baby into the Calvary Cemetery in a sepulchre. You know what in grave that is opening up? She shoved the baby in, put the nipple buckle at her mouth and gone to the dance. It was a man who was walking through the cemetery that heard this baby crying. Apparently the bottle probably slipped from her mouth or something or it's getting cold and said, he ran at first because he thought it was a ghost crying in the cemetery. But when he actually heard like a human being crying, he double checked. And when he went, he saw a 10 month old baby in a sepulcher. The mother is at a dance dancing while her baby. So you understand where I'm coming from. We're not teaching, there's that divide, there's no communication. Um, everybody's trying to outdo everybody. You know, I am better than you, 10 star. You're better than me. I'm wearing this. It's all that competitiveness that, that, that has happened. And, and, and love is slipping away. Love is slipping. Can Lopez can tell you. Love Lopez, is unmute yourself, girl. Let me laugh. Let me laugh, you know. Let me take bad things, let me laugh. Where is it to that? Dance, dancing. 
right? Yeah. At dance, dance, and and listen, baby. listen, man, big stone. I must, I must put on the dearest daddy at from you. I, I cry a couple times during your, during your speech, you know, because you know exactly what's happening, you know, and just mm. to sit here and listen, you know, somebody who know what I go on, you know. We are the victims, the, 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 the good people that, that choose to stay silent for whatever reason. You know, it is so painful. It, 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 it is such a violent act just for the good people to be pushed in a corner and to, be, to remain silent. That's, that's more violent, more than anything else. And we need to start to, 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 to generate some, 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 some good energy, yes. some real energy. You know, because everybody have energy and everybody are good people and everybody has put themselves in one place. But when it comes down to, you know, getting things done, the action part of it, these energies is just some capital E and it fade away. You know, people have to just start put, you know, things into perspective and a true, true pathway. You know, the, 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 the I want to be and the, the, the fandangles and the, 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 the add up, the makeup, it, it's too long on. So people start forgetting their real true self, what they look like, what they sound like, what they should be doing because of too much add-on and all of these things. Yeah, the music is the most powerful weapon, tool, guidance, medicine anybody could ever use. What, what kind of music? We are feed. We are, we, are, we, are, we are cure with the music. You know, we are heal. You know, yes, yeah, so we, me, Personally, I and I, Kerry Lopez, I am, I am reached at a place now where I am willing to exercise true positive energy, you know, and, you know, people start, people want to, to, to be able to believe, you know, to, to be certain of, of, for example, you mentioned the police and, and, and the, you know, getting information oh, sure. across. People, 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 no, 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 no that no work. That, that can never work. That, that, that's not possible. Because the police, Mr. Big Time Police, you know, they have, I don't know what, distract them and send them in the next direction. So there's no trust bond here with the police. You know, probably the soldiers would sound a little bit better. You know what I mean? So we have to come back down to our let's join hands. You know, a grassroots thing. If some people know, say, oi! Oh my so I want different segments, so we don't need that and that. It now come. It now go come under one sheet and hide in and sneak in and beep out. You know, because if it comes so it at the same, you know, corruption. So anything have to come and it have come with the same energy but beep out and polish and paint, it cannot work. Excellent. You understand? It have to come to a natural with, with rules and, and, and laws and certain things full stop, come up, come up, dash, dash. We don't need that. You understand? I will have to stand up, stand up and say, listen, we don't really need it for you. So if you all come with it with your money and come and you're pretty sweet, say you're pretty that and come with the corruption, we don't need it. So we start from zero, you know, to get a point across with some people who are willing to exercise some good energy. A lot of people out there need, need, need to be heard. A lot of people need help. They are scared. They are, they are, they are, they are so push into one situation that they think there's no hope and there's no, you know, some of them don't even know people like you, uh, Mr. Ten, you know, who raising the awareness. I am so glad to be a part of this platform, you know, you. So, so so much awareness are there to be risen, you know, and a lot of people are afraid to come forward. Lord Jesus, my way to be You understand me? Anything can happen just because we don't even have freedom of speech anymore. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the worst things. Because if I am, if I, if my toe crush and me can just say, oh God, me too hot, me hot, oh God. You know? Remember, say you don't crush already, say even sorry, now nah, I'm going to make it feel better. But it, 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 it soothes the pain to know that you care. You care, say so you yes. step on my toe. And I am supposed to scream because I, when you're baptized in the name of anything you want baptizing, huh? If your bucket tour are you in an accident, the first thing I'll come is an explicit or something oh, to describe how you feel. So when you're not in a position to, 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 to explain or to unleash your, your feelings, whatever it is, 
and you have it up in your you're gonna get so ignorant and cross and dark and every time something happens you can't get express yourself it just build up one big barrel and, and when it explodes because if everybody have the same anger that probably just seem for me have because of circumstance and then somebody in the room have the same anger with the same things that them can't get to explain themselves nor just to talk about it you know it can be dangerous it can be a big bomb you understand so until people are willing to accept yes i have done this and it's wrong all right probably because i did so upset when i do it but it's wrong just accept where we go wrong accept certain small things where everybody chew them me don't know for this money or me don't know what you just step past everybody feelings step on it over it and do all sorts of something it can't work that way then people have feelings we have some gentle little word like excuse me please a soft smile we can make a day and the world so different people ask me how it how me do it mm. Yes, and me. Well, me love how you do your thing, you know. You sent me something recently, and you went like, me open my eye, my eye at work. Oh, yes. Everything I saw work. that. This yes. message Everything alone. Yes. Oh, my word. Boost my out. spirit. Because, eh, listen, we have so much energy. And when we wake up in the, the, the right way in the morning, that up full rising there, with, with the energy, you can hear the birds, and you have to be in a certain place, you know, to hold them energy. Yeah. And not all the time you can be there. So you have to suck some of this energy and keep it within yourself in order to enhance it, to exercise it, to share it with, with other people. Because some people just wake up in a hell from them wake until the whole day are just the same energy there. <laughs> yeah. So me and you know we can, we go elsewhere and go in the hills and go in some places where some other people and the time to go. Go get some energy from animals, plants, life itself, the creation itself connects to us. But we not pay it no mind somehow we can we too big and busy and rich. You understand? So these are the energy that we have to capture and share it back. Send out a little light, a little butterfly with a little smile. Kerry Lopez. So listen, if you have, have a bad day and you see Kerry Lopez come for, for, probably my day worse than fear, you know? But it's my <laughs> duty. It's my duty to make me and you know have the same outcome because it now gonna look yeah. good. You understand me? So you know, you I love I, I love the fact that I created a group. And the minute you step into that group, you change <laughs> oh, the <God>. atmosphere. <laughs> oh, it's true. true. It's everybody in the group wake up with one energy where sometimes me wake with the group not good. So me have to come <laughs> kick with some energy and say, yeah, everything good over there so because me can't even stay long because me still have tried to fix up this and I go fix one next something down the line same way with just a joyful energy and you know, everybody have them thing I go through. Every single don't it look at you them them so young and them them create this world you know with the internet and all of that and, and lock themselves away in our environment it's so dangerous but you look pretty so easy relaxing yeah they think it works so we as the parents and as the, the, the leaders and as the artists we have a voice and i'm so happy that you know i have people listening to my voice so i have to be careful what i allow this voice to say because it's a very I, I, my mom not good with big words you know some of the words that me capture them but some of my friend them but i have to be very careful what i let out you know right. because People, people, I didn't even know that I, I, I am role models to some people. It feels so good. You know, so people look up to you. We don't even know. So sometimes you feel like there's nothing going on and, you know, the, the, the world is against you. But on the other hand, some people who are searching for, for different energy, who, 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 who have different mindset, concept, you know, will we, we, we'll find and hear what they want to hear and see what they would really want to see. You know, a lot of people want to come home. It is so sad here. But guess what? We did have a lot of chance to communicate and do the right thing. Some of it. Now communicate. Then just feel like, say, 
them then I want next world and, and, and left certain things undone and then I want to come back to it. Yeah, work. But let know? me come back to you again and um before you know we move on is I was gonna ask you, do you feel a sense of responsibility? And I think you did answer that question. A sense of responsibility. Um, to the youth in terms of lyrical content, the words that come out of your mouth in your music and so forth. Oh, sure. Yeah, these are my words. These are the words that I'm sending out. So listen, if I send, I, I, I am a mother and, and I, I, I am a proud mom. I, I started being a mom pretty early, you know, and yes, I have all the responsibility to make sure say the right things come out of my mouth to my pity them and for me pity them friend and for them friend and friend and friend. Because I would want my daughter to go to wherever she's at with her little friends and say, hey, this is my mommy's song. Do you know it? And our friend them are saying, dear is daddy. Or I sing something where I never feel pleased. I mean, I don't want them to be out nothing because now is not the time for it. You have all sort of artists to, 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 to fill all sort of space out there. It's a big platform. But I really, I am pleased and I am happy to know that I can uplift somebody, teach somebody as, as um, the general say, big stone, my experience, my journey, you know, me let us like to use it to tell some people, say, listen, man, we're not dead, not dash away. Exactly. You understand me? Simple. We're not dead, don't dash away. You understand? See me here. I am Kerry Lopez. Some people know me as Maxine. Some people know me as a as or something. But at the end of the day, put out the best energy you can and I'm sure you will get it back. Parenting is one of the greatest things. Probably I didn't have a full parent package come all the way up to today, you know, but mom and dad was there, you know, and, you know, and, and all of those that could teach in the sharing and the caring, where did we get it from? I found so we grew up. We share amongst the sister and brother, probably we grew up and stop share, but we learned to share. I see my father planting food, the man share, give neighbor, give all sorts of people. So it, 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 it inside of us. So when we grow, I know that there's some things that people adapt. Yeah? And put on, you know, to create that whole, you know, that glare there, that something there where the glass you no know, so so shine and it, it gloomy. What you call it? That, that, you know, put on that glow there over with to make it look like Jamaica is done and it's the worst place and it's a dungeon. We are some of the most beautiful, brightest, you know, God fearing people. If you want to say that, with love, with love, so much love. The other day I was in a, a wholesale and I was shot with some change because I didn't have any silver. And it was a, one of me, my person, my brother, my sister, my blood being a Jamaican, a black, who take out the money and give me when the Chinese tell me, say, she not take the whole of the goods on me buy. $15 would have met me, but I get all of it. So at the end of the day, we still have love, we still have passion, we still have all of what we're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Anything or any energy we're bringing in. That, that, that negative, that crime, that ugly, that gun, that blood, that cry, that scare, that get away, that bury, that brutal. Anything we're bringing, that's something there. Come on, we have all the energy. We can be, be get rid of that. We're sure of that. If we are saying the right thing, if the people who are placed in the perspective that they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, instead of hustling, yeah? I mean, yeah. you know, it's going to change type people hungry and hustling to do it. I mean, you know, it's going to go because hungry and hungry. That's that. So, for hustling, step in, everything gone around. That's that, me? Yes. Miss Kerry Lopez, God bless your sister. Thank you so much. Thank you for your insight because anything that comes out of your mouth is always valuable. And, you know, we love you like life. Thank you so much. Yeah, Thank man. you. And thanks. This is the love the dearest daddy them. Just a little piece. Some people don't understand what dearest daddy yeah, means. You know. 
No, them not understand. I'm one to understand this. That cap the way you have on and the background the way you fix it. You see them two pictures? Yeah. yeah. It's like, yes. Yes. And that may talk about <laughs> when you fix a cap on your head. Yes. Yeah. And put a big stone, fix a cap on your head and go out there and, and have people interested at heart. Not feel alone and not be scrape and scraping yeah. and rare. It's not my father. May I sing about me? I sing about the whole of the father of them. We can call and say, Miss Lopez, you all right? Eh? Did you send your music to that? Just some small little thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Have you been doing that? Mm -hmm. Father in certain situations. You know what I mean? Find out what a sister there. I don't hear, I don't see her. Are you okay? What is going on? Just to father certain situation because a lot of broken homes, broken family, I would call it. You know, universal. You know, and there are still people who out there who do care. You know, so your biological father might not care about you. But there's somebody who always, well, just like this young miss. You know, say so if I have some guava pay tree, if I have two guava, I have one for guava to say, Lad me happy, this is my little friend. Father, some little situation. You might not be what your father know what your father is, just by a phone call to say, How are you doing today? Are you okay? Yeah? Do this and do that. Ah, no, do that. I know why you see that. Do that again. There are some people right now, they're going to tell me, Miss Lopez. You know, I like to see you on here. Yes, yeah. So, yeah, in every aspect, you know, what is not what you do is how you do it. You know, and people yeah. always out there paying attention. Probably, yeah. yeah. So just mm -hmm. do the right thing, and you know you're not perfect. Nobody not perfect. I wanna expect if they come out and be perfect. I miss this. I miss that. So you just sing one one song. Everybody like is all that. No, you have to put your work in and make people respect you. Cause money, money can buy respect. You understand me? Money can buy the respect. Yeah. So at the end of the day, we have to put our best foot forward and try our best. You know to. To treat people the way how you want to be treated. Some people want bad treatment, you know, but I don't think they wouldn't want the worst treatment. You know, so if you want a smile, put out a smile and you get back one. And some no smile go. Let's stop yourself with Kerry Lopez. I said, a man, them, if you ever smile with them, then nobody bad again. They start blowing. You know, one thing we know about you, you can talk from now till next week. <laughs> May have to draw some brick. Kerry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lopez, God bless you, sister. Love before you I let so you much. go, before Thank I let you, you go, you have to sing Dearest Daddy. Sing Dearest Daddy for us. Yeah, maybe it. It's a girl, Kerry Lopez, Big Stone. You're my daddy, ten star, I love you so you both standing right by me. Now the whole world knows. Oh, daddy, I love you so. Oh, you stood by my mommy. You watch us grow. Mm. Respect to my fathers, them I take care of me. I mean, love you so much, oh, dearest daddy. I mean, I recall a night, me go bed down with them and you work very hard just to take care of me. And the trouble where me give them never did abuse me. The disrespectful words, them have to speak unto me. Oh, daddy, I love you. So, oh, wow. you stood by my mommy. You want to screw. Tell me, I dare me. But daddy is a farmer. In plant peas, can yam, banana, pepper. Yes, the travel go the bush in a donkey amper. And I bet you never tell me when you am chocolate. My daddy bun green bush when him a run mosquito. Chop a sleep, wake up and get you a potato. And a tall glass of milk from the fattest ever. Oh, daddy, I love you. So, oh, oh, oh. you stood by my mom. You want to screw Miss Mango? Me yes. like my guava now. My guava, <laughs> me I got it. You know, like my pull up my guava. <laughs> you know, it's all right. Everything good. <laughs> oh, 
much for having me. Lopez. Thank you, yes, guys. And the... yeah, man. All right, Kerry. Bless up yourself, yeah. Bless up, Kerry. Love, love, love. All right. Yes, people, uh, we're going to continue. Man, you heard what Kerry had to say, Claude. And I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I'm, I was always impressed with Kerry. Um, just the way um, I've seen her at quite a few stage show, and they don't even want to give her the mic. You know? All of the men are sharp on the mic, and Kerry has one of the most powerful voice out there as a female. Mm hmm in, and, and when I see such injustice, it hurts. These are some of the songs that we need to hear more. These are the songs that will inculcate greatness in our youngsters. Mm -hmm. you know? And just, but she, she's just, I know, a big fan of Kerry. Kerry, you know, I record from the label of Big Stone Records, you know that? Was. Yeah, but powerful, yeah. man. I enjoy it. She's powerful. Right, right. Well, I tell you what, we, we, we're coming to the end of the show, but, you know, Claude, this is, uh, and I should say Big Stone, you, you know, uh, this is not the end because we're going to try and make this a regular as we spoke about, you know, yeah. and we have all the shows I do. I want to give you at least 15 minutes to at least give us an update on what's going on in Jamaica on any show that I'm doing. You know, you're going to have at least 15 minutes to say your piece, give us an update what's going on in Jamaica and so forth and uh, that slot is there for you for life as long as I have breath mm. Well, yes. as you know, as you know, we have lost Denver and Marvin yesterday Yes and So, yeah, we're also laying to rest Winston Babatunde Witter Babatunde was one of the pioneers of, of, of radio and um, he was a very powerful voice, he speaks you know, against any government, you know, if you're not doing the right thing, he's the kind of person that will do it. Um, we still have Jasmine Dean that is missing. The, the mm -hmm. visually impaired young lady that disappeared uh, on the 27th of February in 2020. She has not been seen since. The case is still open. We don't know where this beautiful little vision impaired child is. We also have Bonnie Whaler's wife, Jean Watt. She has been missing from the 23rd of May, 2020. This year will make it two years yeah. since only Whaler's wife. So I'm saying to myself, how can we have a three-time Grammy winner as Bunny Whaler? Uh, a three-time decorated veteran, the order of distinction, the order of merit, and the order of Jamaica. All these accolades was given to Jabi. Yet still, when his wife disappeared, and I called her his wife, even though they were married, but a relationship that span over 50 years is a long time. Mm -hmm. I tell me, we have not heard from those powers that be, you know, people who are in powerful places that can make things happen. We don't know where Sister Jean Watt is. She just get up and disappear just like that. You know, they said she suffered from dementia or some form of Alzheimer's or something that where she have memory loss. But we need everybody to come, you know, to come looking for her. Look at Nzinga King, the little 20 year old girl that was, uh, her hair was uh, cut by uh, uh, the police. And they're trying to say that it is her who sat in the jail cell over a two day period and pop out her locks. You know how painful it is to remove just one strand of hair from your head? Yeah. Over a two day period and pop out your locks. So uh, they, they showed a video. I don't know if you've seen that video of her cursing and saying she's going to police. But you see what that video did? That's not a negative video for me. That is a very positive video because it shows two things. Number one, she's still on her, her, her locks when you all arrested her. Mm -hmm. So you decided that she was wearing her locks in your custody. And number two, you gave us the motive as to why her locks was trimmed. Mm -hmm. Police woman probably say, um, we are going like a tough so look a rasta girl, rare, rare, rare. We are till we're catching on the cell. The reason I'm saying that they must know something about this. Mm -hmm. Standing mm -hmm. order of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, which I was a part of, says that once you have a prisoner in your custody, every hour you're supposed to check on that prisoner. Mm -hmm. 
every hour. So if a prisoner is behaving irate, right? Behaving like she's suffering from and sound mind or something. It is your duty to make sure she doesn't hurt herself or hurt anybody else. How come there's no report of her being in an irate manner for that period of time? How come there's no report to say that when, when I walked by her cell blocks, I saw her remove a lock or I saw locks on the ground? She'd been wearing a Rastafarian dreadlock since she was a baby. You know? So I'm on the battlefield for that one. Every march, every protest, and there you can go to Big Stone Television and you can see it. You know, I don't play. I'm an activist, not just a vlogger, but because most of these vloggers, they stay behind, you know, the computer, their laptop, and they talk all these great talks. Some of them disguise their voice and their faces. I don't disguise nothing. What you see is what you get. Plus I'm out there on the ground, on the battlefield, protesting, walking along, walk. We have... A part that's his name, St. William Grant Spark. You ever hear of St. William Grant? So. Was uh, an activist, just like Marcus Garvey, back in the days when Garvey was treading the earth. And he was the one that actually helped Bustamante to become the boss that, that, that is now is as Prime Minister, National Year, etc. You named the part of William Grant, and there's not one photograph. There's not one image. There's not one statue of William Grant. How could you have? And there's I would be surprised that that was Sharon's family. Well, that's what I'm thinking too, because that's my maiden name is 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 Grant. So um... and you see what I'm saying? There's not even one image. Come on, Sharon. There's mm -hmm. not one image to show. Uh, I saw some school children. We just did um, the Enzinger story where we went down to St. William Grant. The police tried to stop us, even though we had all the permits and all and so on. It was a big back and forth and so on. And I saw three young ladies. They were about between 10 and 13. And I said, I said to them, I said, do you know the name of the park? I said, no. I said, if you ever get lost in the street, where would you tell your mom and dad that you're at? Yeah, well, when I tell him, say, me downtown under the big tree, because the big tree, okay, there's a big tree downtown where the bus pulls up and so on. Because the big tree is close to the park. I say, you don't even know the name of the park. They don't. And I bet if there was an image or a statue in the park, they would have been more curious. Right. Yeah. All it is Queen Victoria, Metcalf, and the other one named Jordan, all colonizers. All slave masters, and we still have in all their glory in St. William Grand Park. How mm -hmm. fear So, this is the injustice that I will continue to fight and fight and fight until justice is won. His Imperial Majesty says it is those who should have acted or could have acted and make a difference that didn't that causes evil to triumph over good. Oh, then over Marcus Garvey said, if the aim that you serve is, is, is for self, it will get you no further than just yourself. But the aim that you serve, which is common to all, will get you into eternity. I want to be into eternity with my actions. So I want to thank you guys for this great, powerful, stockade radio platform with the 10 Star General and Sharon Mango and you know, Kerry Lopez, and we didn't get a chance to hear from Rankin Ann. She's okay. still Well, we, we have Rankin Ann. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, greetings, Big Stone. Greetings, greetings. I am oh. so overwhelmed. You, everything you have said is what I would want people to hear. Um, every single aspect that you've touched um, regarding Jamaica, the states of the health of the nation, is everything that I've wanted people to be saying. Um, when you talked about mental health underpinning the whole state of affairs, which is something people don't want to talk about or too afraid to talk about, we need to recognize that so much of the violence that happens in Jamaica is underpinned by not just mental health in the way we understand the mad man or the mad woman, but trauma. 
the Jamaican people historically have suffered so much trauma that has not been dealt with. They're not allowed to speak about their trauma. We talk about molestation, rape of children, and they oh. grow with that. And that trauma is entrenched in them and comes out in adulthood and nobody wants to speak about it or hear about it and deal with it and help the people and until the foundation of trauma is dealt with the bigger picture of the whole thing about the violence and crime it will be very very hard to rectify so thank you for bringing that because that is such a key thing in Jamaica right now the, the state of mental health that was one uh, thing I believe, to yeah can you believe um, as you mentioned I just want to say this real quickly a young lady by the name of Santoya Campbell. She was only 14 years old when she was going to school. And a fashion designer, a businessman by the name of Cornelius Robbins, he had sex with her, impregnated her. And when she told him that she was pregnant, you know what he did? He strangled her and threw her, her lifeless body under a bridge. Hmm. This happened in 2015. His lawyer was trying to cut down the life sentence that he got, he got 25 to life. Um, he's not eligible for parole until 25 years. And they're trying to cut it down to 18 years old. Well, the judge up, upheld the ruling. So he's gonna be eligible for parole after spending 25 years in prison. So that is a win-win for, 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 for Santaya. That can bring her back, but, but at least, at least some justice is served there. Right. But sadly, I think 99% of, um, of uh, abusers um, are not taken to justice. So even when you have children reporting that they've been molested, uh, often parents will shut them down, call them yeah, liars. Because, yeah, because yeah, the, 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 the abuser is the breadwinner. The abuser is the one. It's, it's a family member. Yeah. And sometimes it's a family member. I can tell you yeah. this quickly. I'm going to tell you two things that's going to blow your mind. The most incest that is committed in Jamaica is committed in the parish of St. Thomas. Sleeping with son, father sleeping with daughter, brothers and sisters is infested in yeah. St. Thomas. The most case of child abuse that happened in this country, I mean, it happened all over, you know, don't get me wrong, but Westmoreland adds the cases of child abuse. And it is because the government, people who are in a position to make changes and to do better, they're not doing a goddamn thing about it. I remember a pastor man, listen to this, 10 Star and Sharon. A pastor man, right, uh, was accused of having sex with two minors, 14 years old. They did a DNA on the semen, because they did a, after the swab and so on, the vaginal swab, they found his DNA inside these two young girls. You know, they let him off on something and he was able to fly out of this country. Well, this is the problem. This is the problem. And, you know, what we have to also kind of look at is the political um, influences because basically unless the politicians do their job, you know, and that corruption from the top is cut out, it's going to be very hard to filter it down to, you know, the, the ordinary people. Because as you said, when children or young people report something, the police don't take it seriously. Therefore, and because the politicians actually don't direct the police to take things on board and there to be um, authorities to take in hand children that need help and actually take to task the, 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 peop the, the, the people who have done these, these crimes, um, that it will never change. And unless we get a different type of government, a government that actually loves the people, and sadly for the last 50 odd years, we have not had a government that's loved the Jamaican people. And I don't know if you, um, if you, if you listen much to this, this new party, the U UIC that's come up. Yeah, um, yeah, and I'm very interested because they're the first people I've heard for decades that speaks the words that actually is meaningful for the ordinary person in Jamaica that's going to help the ordinary person in Jamaica. Whether they'll put it into action, we don't know. But so far, the words that they're speaking is exactly what we need for Jamaica and the Jamaican people. And until we get governments that care about the people, it's going to be so hard to change the whole um, environment of, of, of the country. 
you know, so it makes me it makes me feel so sad to see a beautiful place like Jamaica because I'm Jamaican, blood Jamaican heritage, just happened to be born in UK, but everything about me loves Jamaica and wants to see good for Jamaica. And it makes me so sad to see that such a beautiful place that had such um, people with such a beautiful nature has changed into, into what it has become now. But as you said, it can come back to what it was. Of course, it can be a, a great place. It can be a superpower um, to influence the world in good, in love, you know, in in success. But it does need to have the 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 government filtered down through to the people, to the education system, because that's another key thing. Education system right now in Jamaica is not teaching um, the people, the young people, about their roots, you know, about who they really are, you know. And I'm saying until all of that is totally, you know, turned around. It's a lot, but it can happen. It really can happen. Powerful, powerful. But one more thing, sorry, yeah, carry on. No, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, one more thing I want to say to you, um, just going back to your sister Janet Sinclair, is in 1981, I wrote a song about Janet, Janet Sinclair because oh, my, really? par my parents used to buy the Gleaner when I was a little girl. Yeah. I used to always read Janet Sinclair. Janet Sinclair. And as a young child, I to, she sounded like a, a, a mature, I thought she was an older woman because obviously we didn't see the picture. Yeah. So when you said she was just 18... This woman used to sound like she's a big mature woman giving mm -hmm. advice, you know. So that's why I did a song about Janet Sinclair from 1981. Just to let you know, say, you know. So let me So give me a little piece, now. Um, <laughs> how it go now? Um, uh, how it go now? How it go? How it go? How it go? Um, <laughs> if you have a problem... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I remember that. Just yeah. write to Janet Sinclair. She could have helped you in your love affair. Once upon a time in life, you full of past strife. Never have no goddamn love life. So me right to Janet Sinclair. Me say me tell her all oh, me life on fear. Me say me tell her all oh, me man on fear. Me say me man run gun and me baby soon born. Me man run born and me baby soon born. Me say me right to Janet Sinclair. Me right to Janet Sinclair. I what she tell me. Hold on to what you got. I saw she tell me. Hold on to what you got. Whether is a little or whether is a lot, or whether is a little or whether is a lot, just hold on to what you got. That's what she tell me. Hold on to what she got. Oh. And there's more, but yes, I just to say that way, way back. I remember Jenny that. Sinclair was a, was yes. an influence in my life. Come you on, know? thank you so, so much. Yes, yeah, so respect. Hey, listen, um, you know, you made my day. <laughs> so you know everything you've said like i said i absolutely embrace it i'm so glad that i i, I tuned in today to hear you because um so i knew about you through um your work with yvonne sterling that's my first you first came to, to my notice but i had no idea all the things that you you know that you're involved with and just to say you know i think there are people in jamaica like yourself who could do a great work if you all came together, because one thing about Jamaican people, they're into people who have influence. So they, they love the beanie man and the bounty. Now, if these people have money and influence came together and you all work together, you could just change Jamaica, sh totally change Jamaica. Because I know there are people like you who probably don't have a name like you. Like there's a, a, a gospel, reggae gospel artist called Lester Lewis. And he has, just like you, a real love for people. And he wants to see change. He will go into the ghetto and walk through the ghetto with his wife and sing to people and talk to people. But that's just, that's just two people. It needs I people know. to come to go ahead. I, I know him very well, you know. Oh, wow. And, and yeah, singing Rose, his wife. And singing, oh, my yeah. God. I mean, they, they, that's my mommy and papa. You know what I'm saying? Love yeah. those people that know them for, for decades. And I know they, they have a heart for people and I know they want to deal with the violent, you know, they want to use the youth to help to teach them, to, you know, to be anti-violent, you know, but everyone needs help. If, I have, if everyone holds hands together, it can happen, but we have to start holding hands, you know, that chain that can't be broken. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but we have to start talking to each other and making a plan how to go forward together. That, that's about right. Yeah, we're starting. Yeah, we're starting. We're starting. <laughs> one tell one, one tell another. Is Jerry Harris still in the room? Is Jerry Harris still there? I'm here. I'm here. I just want to, Big Stone, 
I love you the work yourself, you Jerry. Do, I, I love you. all the work you've done, man. Thank I watch you. all your videos. I've been following you. I've been Thank watching you. all the effort that you put out. And I know you. you don't get paid for these things. And you know what? It's not all about money at the end of the day. The work that I saw that you've done is about loving the people and putting the recognition to the people as far as who you interview and make these people get recognition. And you know what? Your work don't go unnoticed. That's why I'm talking to you now, because maybe you didn't know I'm watching you. You know what I mean? Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, because I see all when Ikamos came back to Jamaica, you did an interview with him. Right. And you, you know, you go around and look for the people who need help. Exactly. You know what I mean? So a uh, big, big respect to you, man, you know? Thank you so much, Jerry. Really and as far as, as far as my input about Jamaica, a lot of people would know the problem, the main core of the problem. And the main core of the problem comes from the head. You know what I mean? And you know what happened to, again, in the system? Once you lose the roots, then it's all, you know, the branch is going to just fall apart I yeah, the a lot of things gonna happen and then the next thing that strike down jamaica is classism and a lot of people know, understand that racism is in jamaica because if you have a light-skinned family over here and then you have another black one they fight the ne next neighbor and they're looking down on them and watching what school they go and someone says school ain't going on they're not worth nothing you know them yes. family can't afford this and you know see them upon the street in the work nothing so you find that people might think about racism runs into black and white but it runs also in our caribbean islands yeah man with each other black yep. against black yeah you know it based on what you own people gonna show you some respect yep. because you own five car and so they look down on you so to me that segregation thing is not yeah. based on like black and white issue. It's based on a person just racist against you because you don't have enough. Exactly. Class, yeah. you're, not, you're not in his class. Right, so in a way you find that, all right, if I'm a struggling artist, right? And I'm out there and I'm on here, say, boy, that tune there going bad you know. You, a, a number one panorid. All of a sudden, you start getting a lot of phone calls. First time, nobody was paying you no attention. You know what I mean? Or you get some kind of deal or something happen for you. Everybody wants to know you. But before, they were looking down on you. So this problem was happening in Jamaica. People kind of put you in certain category. And then that create this kind of uh, disrespect. You know what I mean? So when it comes to like a person owning something and you challenge them, what they do is use violence to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because they think you don't work nothing. So a man will tell you, well, let me just sh shoot you up and, you know, yep. come out and move it. And if you tell him sorry, he tell you about your mother. I tell you something, you know, that yeah. to tick you off. Yeah, yeah. So, so the respect comes from the head after you know, kind of enforce that in the system. You know, censor the radio, make the radio they pay to play the right kind of music to uplift the people. So all of this come from the government not taking control of how the system running. All the worried about, look at what I did. I just launched this and I launched that. But then what about the people? You mm -hmm. launch this and won't launch that, but the people still left with no kind of uh, leadership. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You can make all the highways you want to make. You can do all the, the big buildings. If the people left without any leadership, they're going to kill each other. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my take on it, man. You know, you need leadership awesome. to, to, awesome. to kind of control the people, just like a home. If you have your children and they keep running and going and coming, then they're going to bring things in your house, like weapons or drugs. You know what I mean? Oh, for true. The same thing, man. You know, so yeah. give thanks to your work, man. And, you know, just true. keep up the work. And I respect all what you did, man. And, you know what I mean? Just keep going. 
and just keep the roots part of it going. You know what I mean? Right. Because uh, money don't run things. Mo no, money no. Just, Huh? What motivates me, Jerry, is the people. You know, well, when I look at Tracy and Ricketts, I don't know if you remember that case, the little girl that suffered from osteosarcoma. We actually beg the government to save that little girl. Yeah, so yeah. She's dying. Myself and King Yellowman, big up yourself, Yellowman. We went here with protests. And you know, Yellowman suffered from uh, albinism. It's I know, I know. And that major the problem came, you know. it was in the sun. You can go back yeah. and tell but then you see it. Yellowman is in the sun, wishing that we could show this little girl some attention. She died in the United States. Right. You know what I mean? Even that, that girl that got burnt up. I need yes, to go to Florida. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. She died yeah. as a result just about the same time. With Man, it's rough. Jamaica. Can you imagine that? It's yeah. Burned unit in Jamaica. But you know what happened? The artists yeah, them can make a difference. The of artists. Course. That's why we can make, make a people difference. Like Bojabantan and Shaggy, because Shaggy, you know, he took over the children's hospital. He's mm -hmm. doing millions of dollars to the children's hospital. Butcher Banton is doing the same thing too. There's a boy's home. He just gave three million. When he won, when he won the festival competition, he donated all that money to charity. He didn't take it. Yes, sir. So we have a lot of Jamaican artists that are doing the work. Some of them are very low key. I wish they yeah. were outspoken so that people can follow. follow. Yeah. Yeah, because you know it's the Jerry Iris dude or a, or a, or a 10 star general or a Sharon Mango do it. They want to do it. That's why the Evan Sterling story came out so big because little Lenny, you know, he's a very nice, beautiful friend of mine, yeah. but he didn't want anybody to know that he was actually helping out. And I said, Lenny, remember, are you the gun in a baggy? Remember, you have a status. If you associate yourself with Evan Sterling, it's bigger than Big Stone because I don't have no number one records out here. So right. let's public, let's make this presentation public. And that's what we did. And that's why um, Richie Stephen was able to see it and, and everything else just worked. Yeah. That's and what I'm saying. Able, she mm. was able to live out her older life. You know, um, um, she cried and went for William on stage. I saw that. I saw she it. You know, to do was sing. Yeah. All she ever wanted to do was sing. I know. I know. You know, but you know what? That's what I'm telling 10 Star General. You know what? What he's doing, they said every little make a muckle. You yes. might not see yeah. a lot of people come on, but guess what? You see when the thing get to a level, people gonna yeah. beg to be on this platform. Right. Right. Trust me. Right. Because right. you know what? People too busy running after things that don't have nothing much to do with their life, the core yeah. of their life. Yeah. They don't want to hear anything <laughs> constructive. If Ten Star mm -hmm. was running a platform, where you have some half naked lady on here. Oh, trust man, me, no. the they will beat him on the fence. <laughs> trust me. They will beat him on the fence. Be way hard, up. Man. Trust me. You know what I mean? <laughs> if oh, but Jerry, star, but Jerry positivity, is still, positivity is still stand, um, um, predominant. We just have to give it the platform. That's it. it. That's it. We do it little two cents and we do it. That's it. Right. But you know what? That, that like you said, the phone have a lot to do with people actual yeah. mentality and their yeah. intention you know yeah so so like i said if 10 star post something like a poster and some people half naked then everybody want to see what's going on mm -hmm. but if something positive a man just said sure can't bother with it yeah man i go look street and yeah. look for this and look for that because yeah. i don't have time for them thing their food never look on this and that and you know and yeah. then running after things that don't have nothing much to do with your life more than accumulate a lot of material things and cherish those things and call it life. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So that's what it is, man. So without without any kind of uh, strong state of mind, then you're going to lead to destruction. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. So just keep up the good work, brother. Thank and, you so um, much for listening, man. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So stay blessed. Bless up Thank yourself, you, Jerry. Keep going, man. Yeah, Jerry yeah, yeah. Harris. All right, bless up. All right. Bless up. Respect. Respect. All right, bless. Yeah. Uh, Big Stone, let me ask you a question, right? If if you spoke just now about the Bujubantans and 
this one, that one helped. Did you ever get any are the Marlies involved in anything like that? Because they're so uh, I hear different things going on, and I'm sorry before I, before you go, I had to touch on that. Like, look, are they doing anything? Well, it's a very it's a very dear subject to me, and um, what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it um, fearlessly. Mm -hmm. Bob Marley did what he had to do mm -hmm. in building this music under severe circumstances, mm -hmm. sometimes humiliating circumstances. Right. He paved the way for his children. Now we have some great kids. I mean, they're all multimillionaires and so on. But I think more could be done because when you look at a place like Pinnacle, mm -hmm. that Pinnacle, Scott's Pass in Clarendon, where it was said that Bob Marley and Rita gave this 25 acres of land to the Rastafarian down there. Okay. Somehow, fast forward to year 2020. The Rastafarian are blocked from going there. There's a court order. They're getting ready now to bulldoze the, 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 the tabernacle, which is sacred to the Rastafarian. Mm -hmm. And much of the Marley family, other than Stephanie, which is the daughter to Rita, jumping in. Nobody's doing anything to save that piece of land. Or say he didn't want to give them 25 acres. Give them five acres. Right. But as the tabernacle. They'll be more than grateful for it. But just to take back everything and to say that the land wasn't a gift, it was just a loan for you guys to be there. I think it's a slap in, 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 in the face of Rastafari and the elders who, 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 who fought and, and, and for the cause. And I know, and I know they could do a whole lot more too for Rima. Because when you look at Rima, Rima is where the trench town is. Mm. First, second street, third street, all the way up to ninth street. Bob Marley used those streets in a song. I took a walk to First Street to see Nati. Mm -hmm. Then I move on to Second Street. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, George, you would like the fire. All these scenarios happen in Trench Town. Is there a, a clinic for the people down there? No. Uh, 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 Rita went to uh, Ghana, which is great because an African country. She built an hospital down there for the Ghanaians. Ain't nothing, no, the Gambians, I think. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but a clinic. You know, uh, if you look at what's happening down there in Rima, it's gang infested. People are losing their life left, right, and center. And I think with the power of the Marlies, I'm not trying to say that they didn't do anything for Rima, but continue. And, and, and you need to do more. Mm -hmm. You know, the amount of money that comes into the Marley family yeah. us, should have been a gift to the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so many things. Bob still make over 20 million dollars US a year in royalties. His songs are still on the chart. You know, their mm -hmm. memories, their, 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 their pictures, their, 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 their souvenirs of Bob that is raking in millions of dollars every year. They don't need to take back Scott Park from the Rastafarian. That's just my take. I think they should have just go ahead and say, listen, let the Rastafarian live in peace. And so a couple of Rastafarians are buried there. Martin Maplana is buried on the property. What are you going to do with Martin Maplana's grave? Mm. Mm -hmm. What the guiding force that helped to guide Bob Marley into who he has become? Right. Martin Maplana was yeah. responsible for helping Bob. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I remember, yep, I read about that. You know, so I, I, I'm saying that <laughs> let love last in Jamaica. Let's bring that 70s yeah. back to Jamaica. You know, we, we don't care about each other. You know, the, we were lost as, as a race of people. And, and that's why I'm fighting so hard. And I'm glad you gave me an opportunity, uh, 10 Star General and you, Sharon Mango, to be on your platform. So at least I can tell my story and how every little nickel makes a muckle. Muckle. It will work. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. we all have to play our part. Yes. And I'm very happy I did mine. I defy my family and I'm still doing mine. Even if they don't do any, uh, a matter of fact, I want to say this on your program mm -hmm. and I'm glad you're recording this. I'm 64 years old now. I'll be 65 in July. When I do transition from this earth, I don't want no fancy casket. I don't want no big um, mausoleum. I don't want nothing expensive. Just give me a wooden box 
a wooden box so I can go back to the earth. That's all I want, you know. And I know my family members, uh, you know, some family members, when you're dead, no one will come with a casket value two million. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. Two million dollar casket. So even even if people are going to say, but at that end there, you know, that's what Big Stone wants. So I said it for the first time publicly on your program, bury me in a tinderbox. You don't have to varnish it. Just kneel up one side, kneel up the next side, put the two sides and put a lip on it and send me down into the earth. You know, if you even pay for that. Don't, don't. Uh, Big Stone, we, we, we celebrate your life today. Big I, Stone, I hear bury something. Where you going to bury something, at Big Stone? No, but, but bury I want you. Be, yeah, no, but I want it to be known. I want the world to know that when we transition, right? You uh, want it, board casket. All right, full stop. We're not going to further with that burial. Yeah, 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 don't look at my family. Well, 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 well. Like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Let, let, let oh, me come to this point. Let me come to this point. I want to applaud man like, because I want to celebrate who you are as an individual, because you've helped so many, you know. And, you know, I am glad that in your lifetime, you saw the outpouring of Lord towards you during your time of need. Right. Now you, like me, have had heart problems recently. I, yeah. So, and Can I'm so happy. Can I talk huh? about that just a little bit? Say that yeah. again. Can I talk about that just for two minutes? Yeah. That's why I brought it up because I'm a happy man like Bounty Killer came along and his foundation to help you yeah. out. Three hundred thousand dollars. All right, what happened was, like I said, there was this little girl by the name of Tracy Ann Ricketts. Now, I, you know, I've been athletic, you know, I'm an ex boys brigade, boy scout, military, police, and so on. So um, I don't worry about anything. I don't suffer from high blood pressure or anything. But when Tracy Ann Ricketts died, a part of me died. Mm -hmm. Myself and the man and Nature Ellis and Nesbeth and Turbulence and all the others, we work assiduously to raise funds to see if we could have this little girl. So when she passed away, I took it very, very personal and very hard. I start to fret. And two days after she passed away, I came home one Friday night, I'll never forget. And I went to bed and I got up because I started to cough at about one o'clock. So I said, my God, COVID, you know, I thought more or less, mm -hmm. but then I started to continue coughing and then I found out that I was getting weaker and weaker and weaker. So what I did was, with the little strength that I had, I took a shower. I went next door to my neighbor and asked her if she could take me to the emergency ward because I'm not feeling so well. I'm not breathing so well. When she took me to the emergency ward, I couldn't walk from my car to the, the ward. I had to get a wheelchair. I was so weak. Um, when the doctor did my blood pressure, it was 225 over 167. The doctor looked at me and said, Big Stone, um, he didn't see Big Stone. He said, Sir, you're a walking dead. You're either supposed to have a massive stroke or a heart attack. That's what he told me. Anyway, they stabilized my blood pressure, brought it down. I was there up until about four o'clock the same day. And the doctor said, We did some blood tests and it looked like you have some blockage in your heart. You need to go now outside of this hospital because we don't have any vacancy here. Plus the next uh, waiting day for a cardiologist is six months away. Mm. You, you're gonna die if you don't seek help outside. So I went outside, I went to the um, the, 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 the art foundation down there and, and, and we did some tests, cost a lot of money, $50,000 for a cardiogram, then an electrocardiogram and so on. And they came back and said, Mr. Sinclair, you need to do an angiogram. Now an angiogram is a test, not an operation. And it is where they put you on your back, right? They make a slit in your wrist and they insert a tube and that tube go all the way up into your heart and then they flush your heart with dye so that they'll see where the dye goes. So they cannot ascertain no other way. Right. If your heart is truly black, if the, art, if the arteries are black, the only way they can do that is an angiogram. Mm -hmm. That's going to cost 700 plus thousand dollars. 
going to get $700,000 from. Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, a lot of my friends came out, you know, and they did a, they did a virtual concert mm-hmm. with 200000 That wasn't close enough because we need seven. Then Bounty mm-hmm. came, Rodney Price with my friend Paul Bankillus Giscom. And they said, this don't for the amount of work that you have done. Even when you're sick, you're still trying to help people. We have to help you. So they invited me to Winfred William on stage mm-hmm. and make a presentation of $300,000 to me. And then the rest came from people I, I've never met from all over the world. And I did the angiogram on the, I think it was the 15th of September. Mm-hmm. And when the doctor came back and he said, Mr. Simply, he was smiling. So I said, Doc, why are you smiling? Is it that you're going to tell me bad news? He said, no, Mr. Sinclair, a miracle has happened. I said, what are you talking about? He said, there's no blockage in your heart. <laughs> now, if there was a blockage, if there was one blockage, you know what a stent is? You yeah, have a, you have to put a stent in. Mm-hmm. You have to put a stent. Guess how much for that stent? One million dollars. And if two stent, it will be two million Three stent would be three million. So the Almighty would work under your prize and your prize and your prize. And yeah, breathing, walking, running, and mm. like I've done before. So We're glad you're still you with you. Know. Thank you. You're here for a reason. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, you can't go nowhere. And guess what? SPRB Radio, which is who we are. We don't give you authority to leave planet Earth until God says so. Right. God says so. <laughs> That's right. Okay, promotion. <laughs> big up, big up. Big up. Yes. Man, it's been an absolute pleasure, you know, uh, having you on our show and you sharing your story, your journey, what you've been through, what you're still going through. You know, it, it's been really motivating and inspiring. And as long as we have life, we're going to be by your side playing our part, you know, Absolutely. towards making the world a better place. That's what this show was all about, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I want to come to Shan because we did say that we're going to bring Big Stone back on. But every time we do a show, we're going to give him 15 minutes to give us a a Jamaican update, man. Wrong, what's going up. on in Jamaica? No, man, not, not a problem, man. It's an honor for me to be able to sit on such a prestigious platform and just to, you know, um, not put my country down, but just I like Jamaicans on the outside of the diaspora that, hey, we need your participation. This country belongs to you still. Don't don't run away from us. You know, still hang on in there. there, there, there there's hope. And, 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 and we're going to do it if we do it together. And my wish and my hope for Jamaica is to one day I'll be able to walk the streets without worrying I have to close my windows. I don't have to worry about a young man trying to rob me of my sneakers mm-hmm. or like they did with junior bands. But I can love each other and, and embrace each other because the political war is over with. There's no, pop, no, there's no politics going on, which is great. We, we thought we would never come to that. Right. But still have... Um, classism, we still have people showing off on each other, we still have family members killing family members for property, you know, piece of land down here, and, and you can't die fast enough, a person will put a hit on you, so that you're dead quick and then can get the land to sell real quick and um, there's so much striving and, and, and animosity and, and the gang, we have over 400 gangs in Jamaica can you imagine that? Jesus. Over 400 and I'm being um, conservative when I said that. Mm. that. Every corner there is a gang now. And you know how a gang is formed? Boom. Guy starts scamming and first of the money that he makes from the scamming, he buys a few guns, arm a few kids around him, and then they start scamming and they buy some more guns and by the time you look around, the country is infested with guns. Where are these guns coming from? We don't make guns down here. We don't make ammunition down here. Yet still, we have the most gun, the most murder. For the last 25 years, every year religiously, we have killed over 1,000 people. Why? That needs to stop. You know? we wanna, this program here wants to bring hope to many, you know? So having these discussions is about making it a better place for all involved, you know? 
And I just pray that with God's intervention, that we'll be able to achieve our aim. I'm glad that, you know, in doing what we are doing brings hope to the next generation. It's better to say something and be hated than to stay mute and allow things to fester from bad to worse. You know, so I want to be before I come to Big Stone, you're going to sing us out with a Marcus Garvey thing, you know. So clear uh, up your throat, clear your throat. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying it a song, but I'll get a punch. I'll get a punch. You're going to give us a look at acapella. I'll do an acapella. Yeah, yeah. Marcus Garvey, you're my hero. Marcus Garvey, yes, you are the one. Marcus Garvey, you know I love you. You have changed my life to be the man I am. That's it. Bro, you, can bro, play the bro, bro, bro. you can play you can play the record. You have it there. I'm gonna do that. Sharon Mango, where I say. Well, I wanna say thank you so much to Big Stone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your works, thank you for the inspiration. Um, Ten Star and I long before we even started doing this, we spoke about all these injustices and things that's happening, which led us to this platform right here. So, you know, of course, I'm very happy that we have now inducted you into the SBRB radio clan because we have to have you back to give us updates so nice. and that's not us and that's us doing our part. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, not a problem. Doing our part and keeping the masses abreast of what is happening. The more we continue to do that, the more somebody's like, okay, I wanna get on. Okay, I wanna do something. You know what I mean? That's what we're looking forward to. And I'm so happy that we met you. I was like, God, not ready for you yet because <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not find yeah. the blockage. Yeah. No blockage. No blockage. Can you imagine that? Imagine, yeah. imagine. Up, take it seriously, yeah. take it very seriously. I tell Ten Star all the time. He, of course, was battling his own stuff. And I said, trust me when I tell you, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers. And this is what yeah. it is, right? You have to keep pushing on. We go through our stuff, but we have to keep pushing on because it's a sacrifice. It's almost like a sacrifice. You're sacrificing yourself, yes, but God will give you the breath and the strength thank you. to keep it going. So thank you again. Kerry Lopez, thank you so much. Rankin and Jerry Harris, thank you guys for, for, for staying with us and, you know, keep helping to keep this going. It will grow. It's growing. It's already growing. And I know that people are going to be clamoring especially more so we have you, we're bringing you on board. They're going to be clamoring like, boy, I mean, when I get on, you know, I have something to say, you know? Yeah. All of that yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Not a problem, man. It's, a, it's an honor. Yes. And, and, and big and respect to the, big, big respect to the person known as the iPhone. We don't know your name, but we're just referring you to as iPhone because that's what you got on your, uh, you know, identity thing there. Yes. So, but, so thank you for contributing anyway. Yes, big story. My phone. Uh, I was this 19 when Janet Kennedy, one of the youngest persons to be inaugurated as president, he made a statement, and this was what helped to bring me back to Jamaica. He said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for you. So guess what? Yeah. We never want to steal America and do the things that women can do at Jamaica. My wife begs me, you know. I remember yeah. saying, this wife, you know, yeah, man, they have a sweet boon on this wife with my twin boys, and what she gave me and everything there. And but she just don't understand that I just don't want to live there, you know. I want to, I want to do all I can do for for Jamaica here, you know, you know. And and and, and I'm very happy. iPhone say, I'm I God. am God, it's me. I changed my, my phone, phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my phone. <laughs> God bless you, bro. From Nigeria. Oh, oh, Gloria. Okay. Nigeria. Big up Nigeria in the building. Big up Gloria. Say, say that again. It's Gloria. From Nigeria. I promise Gloria. Yeah. Yeah, from Nigeria. Yeah. What a thing. 
Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. At least we got to know who that mystery person was. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, before you go, let me see if I can work some magic again, because I, I just learned this process just the other day. So bear with me while I try to see if I can play that song. I think that's the song, right, uh, Claude? Yeah, that's it. I don't know if you can hear it. You got to bring it up. He's doing it there. Um... No, you can't hear anything, B. He's showing the, uh, the song, baby. You can't hear it. No. No? Okay. I played a few a few seconds of it, but uh, I don't know. I've got to work out the sound on... Uh, the next time around, you'll do it. Yeah. I think it's got to do something with copyright, which is why they're fasting with Zoom now. But, yeah. Well, thank you, everyone, for being part of the show. We're going to end the show now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Big Stone. You made my day. I feel like I'm on cloud 26. <laughs> Not to mind, 26, you know, and God bless you for what you do and may you continue. <laughs> Shara Mango, my party from way back when, uh, Jerry Harris, Gloria, uh, what's Lopez. her name? Uh, Lopez, that's my sister right there. I call her my little daughter, you know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, everybody else who's in the building, bless you up. And I thank you all for being part of the show. We're going to do a show next week, Thursday. Big Stone is going to kick us off from 11 a.m. to 11.15. He's going to give us an update. And then we're going to be joined by Amari Banks, who is a former cricketer and a musician. Woo! Join us then. Is that? Oh, that yeah? Is that, is that right? right? That's how you get Amari. Amari yes. Banks, I come up with Yes. God bless. All right. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It was a welcome. Take you know, care. I had a wonderful time, man. And it was worth every moment of it, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought that people would only listen to some of the things that we spoke on and and, and act on it, you know, because when we do a show like this, we want solution at the end of the day. Right. Yes. We have saved some lives and we have saved some folks mm -hmm. and turned some misguided views around. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Rankin, and for your contribution, Jerry Harris yes. and Kerry Lopez. Thank you.